Good evening, saints of the Most High God. We greet you this evening in the great, marvelous, and magnificent name of a wonderful Savior. His name is Jesus, Savior of the world, our, our, our Creator, our Savior, our Redeemer. We truly give honor to the Lord on this Wednesday night. We thank the Lord for allowing us another time to come together as the body of Christ to grow up in the things of the Lord. Amen. And, and talk about uh, what is important to God. And what is important to God rooted is his word. Amen. And so we want to look at this lesson tonight. Um, talk about, first I wanted to say how important it is for folks to be in Bible study. It seems like uh, with so much going on in the world and, and so much happening coming out of this pandemic or still uh, at the back end of the pandemic, folks have gotten away from a consistent, uh, continuous uh, uh, Bible study, amen, and we want to get back into the word of God, and we want to get back into what God has commanded all believers, he's commanded that all believers to study, to show themselves approved, amen, and so we want to get back into that whole understanding of what God will have for us, um, it's funny how we will um, um, have, uh, go to the gym on a regular basis. I know I'm a, I'm a gym rat. I got a regular routine of working out or we'll get our nails done on a regular routine basis or get our hair done or even watch our favorite TV show. It's like clockwork, amen. I know that one of my favorite TV shows, Seal Team, I watch that clockwork, amen. As soon as it comes on, I'm right there to watch it. But it should be the same way when it comes down to God's word, amen. God's word should be important to it because God's word is eternal and God's God's word is what's going to meet us in glory. Amen. Heaven and earth is going to pass away, but not one jot nor tittle of his word will leave. And so we want to be um, um, obedient to studying the word of God consistently every week here on Wednesday night. Amen. So I want to encourage you with that. Getting back to Wednesday night Bible study, and we're in this great exegetical study, the study of the book of Jude. We're in the study of the book of Jude, and I've named this Watch Out for Wolves in Sheep's Clothing, because we got a lot to talk about, because there's a lot of wolves out here in the church, amen, in sheep's clothing. And we want to, uh, we've been engaged, if you're just tuning in, we've been engaged in an exegetical uh, didactic study of the book of Jude. Um, and, and, and we have to understand, to go back quick, a quick recap on this and understand that the book of Jude focuses on the deeds and the teachings of evil men and women, evil men and women, I should say, uh, uh, evil men and women who will be living when the church age comes to an end. Amen. We're dealing with uh, some um, 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 dealing with some future teaching, even now, a teaching that's relevant to now, of apostasy, amen? And, it's a, and a matter of fact, Jude is the only book in the Bible that is devoted to discussing this great apostasy. I explained this to you before, apostasy means the departure, departure from the faith, amen? A leaving from what we know to be true, amen? No longer do I want to follow Jesus, amen? No longer do I want to be in fellowship uh, with Christ and with his church. I don't, I don't want that no more. I don't want to be in fellowship with Christ and his church. No longer am I concerned over the things of the Lord, amen? I'm no longer concerned over the things of the Lord, and I'm turning away from God's truth. That's called apostasy, that's a falling away that Jude is identifying and addressing here. And all through the New Testament, we see um, the writers identifying apostasy. apostasy. Amen. Remember what the apostle Paul tells us. Remember what he told us in 1 Timothy um, um, chapter 4, verses 1. Um, he says, now the Spirit uh, says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. He said that in the latter times, in the later days, which we're in right now, and we'll see in days to come, that many will fall prey to false doctrine, um, seducing spirits. That's what we're dealing with now. Amen, church. We need to wake up. Doctrines of demons. Amen. And so he said that it's a coming a time that many will fall away. And that's what Jude is addressing in his book, The Great Apostasy, amen, a turning away. And, and we see a lot of that occurring, um, church, right now. And we're seeing the birth pains of it. We're seeing some of it happening right now, a big falling away. And so the epistle of Jude, the epistle of Jude plays a very important role in developing 
the attitude and the character of those who will place themselves, folks who will place themselves, men and women, not just men, but men and women, they're going to place themselves in a position of spiritual leadership over the things of God. Amen. And the Bible, we're going to see as we go into the study, the Bible is going to classify them as false teachers. We've got to understand that um, there's a counterfeit for everything that God has. Amen. We see that Paul writes that in the book of Corinthians. Amen. There's a counterfeit. And so Jude is going to classify, he's going to show forth the so-called teachers um, talking about the things of the Lord, but they're false. It's a heresy. It's a, it's a seductive way of luring people away. Amen. And what Jude is doing in the book, listen, Jude is warning true believers. He's warning the church. Those who have touched the hem of Jesus' garment. He's warning true believers about those, watch this, who will creep in unawarely. Amen. They're going to creep in, if they haven't already, into Christian dome to do what? To disrupt, to, to, dis, uh, to destroy, and to dismantle the faith of many. Amen. To lead many astray. And so they're going to creep into Christendom, not in the world. Watch this. They're going to creep into the church to lead people astray with false doctrine. Amen. And that's what Jude is identifying. That's what rooted. That's what we need to understand. And what's going on as we're looking around today, there's a lot of falsehood out here. And we who are the believers need to understand that. So as we go back into the study, you know, before Jude, here we go. Let's get started. Before Jude exposes the darkness of false teachers. I know we've been spending the last three weeks um, dealing with two verses. That's it. We've been only on two verses in the last three weeks. We're in the fourth uh, week of this teaching. Amen. But it's for a purpose. Because watch this. What Jude wants to do, he wants to, he has to first reaffirm. We got to get refocused. He needs to reaffirm something that's so key for us. Before we talk about the darkness of false teachers and apostasy and falling away, First, the believer needs to be uh, reaffirmed of their security. We need to know that no matter what, we are secure in Jesus Christ. Get me to tonight, amen? That we uh, who are the believers, we have a security. He, he recaps and reaffirms the security of the true believer. In these two verses, before he start talking about the dark stuff and, and, and the falsehood, he wants us to know who we are. He wants us to know as believers that, watch this, he wants us to that, know that no matter what, how great the apostasy is going to get, no matter how great it's going to get, no matter what the decline of faith is going to look like, amen, no matter the rise of false teachers, amen, because, watch this, I want you to grab this tonight, because you and I, if you truly have given your life to Jesus Christ, because you and I have been called, because you are the beloved we're going to talk about tonight, because you are kept, and watch this, and because you are blessed by God, I want you to grab this, get this, get this truth, you and I cannot be dragged away. We can't be dragged away. We can't be dragged away where we no longer want to serve, love, worship the true and living God. We can't, the true believer has a security that's, that's in Jesus Christ that he gives us. He gives us, why? Because we, we've been called by him. We are loved by him, we are kept by him, and we are blessed by him. And he gives us the security that we need. But he still wants us to be made aware of what's going on around us, what's trying to now um, invade our churches, what's trying to lead many people astray. But he wants us to know who we are, that there's a security for the believer. And that's what we want to close out with with these last two verses. Amen. He says in Jude, verses 1 and 2. Now remember, Jude is a short epistle. It's really no chapter. It's verse. Amen. So a lot of times I hear people say chapter 1, verse 1. But really it's this verse. Jude is just a verse. Amen. And so in verses 1 and 2, he says this. Go back to it real quick. He says, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. We talked about this. We gave you uh, uh, the, the background on this. To those, and this is what we've been putting our foot on, we've been unpacking this. To those who have been called, that's special right there, who are loved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Now, some people say that, uh, that Jude was beginning to talk about salvation, uh, but then he re saw what was going on and he went straight to dealing with the apostasy. I don't know. 
But I do know that Jude wants to give us security. Before he starts talking about this great falling away, he wants you and I to know that if you're truly in Christ, you can't fall away. If you're truly in Christ, he, God will keep you. You are preserved by him if you're truly in Christ. Amen. And so watch this. As we look at this and go back to this lesson, I want you to pull out your outlines. Um, um, you can go to admin. Um, I think admin is, is sending out uh, outlines to those. If not, you can um, um, call the church, get your um, outline, or go to that little block up there on the description um, box, pull it up, and you'll see an outline. I want you, because we're in an exegetical didactic study. It's like being in seminary class. It's like being in a Bible college. Amen? We want you to learn like that. Amen? And so as he reaffirms this thing about the security of the believer, let's close out these last two verses. You probably say, Pastor, well, we've been these two verses for a long time, but it's so much in this, and that's why you don't want to run through the verses, because that's how we grow up. Amen? That's how we grow up. And so we want to squeeze all we can out of these, verse, these first two verses, amen, before we start looking at some dark stuff, before we start getting deep and exposing some things that's going on around us in this world, amen, by way of apostasy and false teachers, amen. So let's go. The second layer, let's get right into it. The second layer of security, we talked about the first layer. Remember the first layer we've talked about that you were called. And hopefully you understand now what it means. Praise God, the fact that God has called us. Amen. He has called. If you're saved, God called you. He called me and I, we heard his voice. Amen. Praise God for that. And we took time to unpack the call. Amen. Go back in the videos and watch it. Amen. And understand that you've been called. And with that, that's a security that God has given us. But the second layer of security, and I want you to get this class. I want you to get it tonight. You are beloved. That's powerful. That's a powerful piece right there. That you and I who are saved, that have given our hearts to Jesus Christ, we are the beloved. Get this, amen? One of the most fantastic things for us to realize is that God the Father considers us his beloved. The devil don't want you to get that, amen? You and I are his beloved. Now, let me explain this. And notice I said beloved. Now, if you got a King James Bible, it may say, instead of beloved, it may say sanctified. It may say, uh, uh, but rather than beloved, it may say sanctified. Amen? But, but I like the, N, uh, the NIV and the NASB because it's closer to the Greek. Because beloved, beloved is used to express something. I want you to get this tonight. Write this down somewhere. Beloved is used to express, get this, a past action in the Greek. It's a past action with a continuous result, a past action. Beloved shows forth a past action with a continuous result. And what do I mean by that when we talk about beloved? Well, well, beloved is a perfect participle, and it's used in the original Greek manuscript, and it means this. It means that God loved us. He loved you. If you're saved, he loved us in the past. He loved us in the past. You said in the past of what? Before the creation, he loved you. That's why the word beloved is, is so key, amen? He loved you and I before anything was formed. He loved us in the past, amen? He loved us, watch this, it's a continuous action. He loved us before we were even born. God the Father loved us before we was even born, amen? Before anything was created, I want you to grab this great truth. He loved us. We're going to be talking about some of this on Sunday when we preach, amen? He set his affection upon us where he set his affection upon us, grab this class, at Calvary. You can't get away from Calvary. You can't get away from the cross. God loved us, a continuous action, in the past, perfect participle, in the Greek manuscript, amen? He loved us in the past, before the world was even created, and his affection, watch this, was bestowed upon us, laid upon us, at Calvary. Amen? That's powerful peace. Amen? He loved us. Amen? He loved us. His affections on us at Calvary when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die as our substitute. That's the love of God for the beloved. Amen. Here we go. Here we go, beloved. Here we go. God loves us. Write this down somewhere. You got to get this tonight in this Bible study. Somebody, you may be depressed. You may feel as though the world is falling apart. But I'm going to tell you something. If you are the beloved, watch this. God loves us just like he loves his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Watch this. He don't love us no different than he loved Jesus. You better get that tonight. 
He loves us just like he loves his, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, if you are the beloved. That's the security he's given us. In the midst of all that's going on in the world, amen, in the midst of apostates, people falling away, watch this. For the beloved, God says, I love you just like I love my son, Jesus Christ. That's powerful, amen? Watch this. Check out some scriptures. Look, look at some scriptures here that, that kind of bring this point to bear. Amen. Look at, look at John. Look at this. In John 16, 27. Know the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. Look what Jesus says. He says, God the Father love you. Why? Because you love me. He says, God the Father loves you. If you love Jesus, uh, uh, um, class, if you love Jesus, then you are the beloved. Because guess what? God loves you. God the Father loves you. He loves you because you love Jesus. He loves you. Amen. And so as we see this here in John 16, 27, we don't talk about love like we should. Amen. We, we, don't, we don't talk about how important it is to love Jesus in church that much. Amen. We talk about church. I love church. I love singing. I love um, um, class, Bible class and all that. But do you truly love Jesus? Because if you love Jesus, watch this, you are the beloved and God the Father loves you. Also, watch what it says here. Look at this one. Look at the next one here. In John 17, verses 22 and 23, he says, I have given them the glory that you gave me. Look at Jesus. That they may be one as we are one. I am them and you and me. So that they may be brought to complete unity. Uh, then the world will know that you sent me and I have loved them even as you have loved me. Look at the love that God has bestowed upon the beloved. That he loves us. Amen. And he loves us just like he loves his son. And we're all connected. Amen. And this beloved. So when we walk around the hallway and we say, hey, beloved, that's a great that's a great address. That's a great title for the believer. We are the beloved. Amen. We are the beloved. Let me give you another one here. Look what he says here over here in in in, in over in Ephesians. In Ephesians, he says to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he have made us accepted accept it where in the beloved in christ in the love of christ i want you to get this truth watch this before we start talking about false teachers everybody want apostasy you got to know who you are you got to know because of this love that you and i have been beloved by the lord watch this that we can't get moved that we can't never fall away from him amen that he will always uphold us because we are the beloved Grab that tonight. Amen. You are the beloved. You walk around your house. Put the demons to flight. I'm the beloved. Amen. I don't, I don't care what's going on in my world. Amen. I want the world to know. And I want the demons. I'm going to speak it out. I am the beloved. And so we see this. How much does God love the beloved? How much? I like Isaiah. It, Isaiah gives us a portrait here of how much God loves the beloved. And he says here, in, over here in Isaiah, he says in Isaiah 49, he says, can a woman forget her sucking child or uh, uh, can a mom uh, who's nursing her child forget her child, the child that she nurses? You know anything about moms nursing their, their children. That's, a, that's a, a tender time. That's a closeness time, a mom that's, that's nursing her child. Amen. And God puts himself in this arena with you and I. Amen. Look what he says here. He says this. He says, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, that they may forget, yet will I not forget thee? God says, you are a part of me. I love you. I'm never going to forget you. You are the one that I love. You are the beloved. Watch this. And behold, watch verse 16. I have gra graven thee upon the palms. I'm using the King James here. Uh, upon the palms of my hands. He says, you are the beloved. And so much so to the fact that, watch this. That your names are written, you are written in the palm of my hand. And this is an anthropomorphism. Amen. I'm giving you a little bit of, 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 of scholarly stuff here. Anthropomorphism means that God has hands. And we know God doesn't have hands. But for you and I, with these little puny minds, we can understand. He says, I have you tattooed. I have you, I have you, Pastor Webster. I got your name. I have you, watch this, written in the palm of my hand. That's how much I love you. You are the beloved. How can I forget about you? Somebody needs to walk away with this tonight. How can I ever forget about you when you're, you're graven, written in the palm of my hand? And so as we look at this, we see how much God loved the beloved. Now, I'm building this up because you got to understand about the security that we have 
in Jesus Christ. But you know what? God's love has the power to, 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 to do something to hang on to us. In the midst of apostasy, we see people falling by the wayside. We see people walking away from the Lord. We're going to see false teachers out here with all kinds of stuff. And the days to come, if you keep living, you're going to see it. But guess what God's going to do with us, church? He's going to keep holding on to us. He's going to hold on to us. And he's going to hold on to us. And watch this. And this takes us to the third, to the third um, layer of security. Not only are we the beloved, but watch this, but you're kept. God says, I will preserve you. God does it. You don't preserve yourself. Watch this. You can't keep yourself. Amen. You can read all the Bible you want, quote all the scriptures you want, pray all the prayers you want. God is the one who keeps us. He keeps us. And we are kept by God. I want you to grab this. This is a great security for you and I, that we are kept by God. Watch this. I love this. I love this. The third layer of security, you are kept, a.k.a. you are preserved. The Greek, we see a, the, the Greek verb here, uh, uh, terero, amen? And it means that when God's keeping you, it means he's watching over you. It means that he's standing God over you. He sta God, the almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth is standing God over us, amen? That's what it means, beloved. That's what it means, beloved of God. I'm giving you your title right now. I'm giving you your name right now. You're the beloved of God. You need to tell somebody on Sunday, you're the beloved, amen? We need to spread that, amen? That God himself, God himself has a watchful, careful God over something, watch this, that he cherishes. Something that he, that he, that is priceless to, to him. Watch this, you and I are priceless to God. And all the demons in hell can't, can't take that away. We are priceless to God. And so he watches over uh, his priceless treasure, amen? That means that our footsteps, watch this, are guarded by him, amen? There's some steps that we want to take, but guess what? God's sovereignty redirected us, amen? It means that our souls are guarded by him, amen? He's guarding our souls. It means that we are kept through all the trials that come into our existence. He is still keeping us through all, watch this, through all the sin that you and I still commit, amen? Thank you, Jesus. He's still keeping us, amen? Amen? Do all the attempts of the enemy that comes in our lives, the Lord is a keeper. He is preserving us. Get that word. He's preserving. And that's what it says here. He is the one who keeps us. Not only does he keep us from all these other things I just mentioned, but guess what? He also keeps us from physical death. Amen? He keeps us. And so as we see this, this is a fantastic concept. Watch this. To be kept by God. If you ain't got nothing else to praise God, you thank the Lord for the fact that he's a keeper. He keeps us. In the midst of all that's going on, God is keeping us. Amen? He's keeping us. That's why you're still in worship. That's why you're still in fellowship. That's why you haven't fallen off and, and, and abandoned him. That's why you have not walked away when trials of life have hit you and, and you've been torn down even to the ground. But you still, the love of God is still permeating your heart. You know why? Because God is keeping us. He's keeping us. Amen. Check out the biblical evidence of this, of how God keeps us. And, and, and I want you to start understanding theologically, amen, how God keeps us and preserves us. That's why you can never apostate. That's why you can never utterly fall away from God. Amen. Because God is a keeper. Look what he says in John. Get some word up in you. Get some Bible up in you. Don't go by what somebody say. Go by what the scripture says. In John 10, 28 and 29, look what Jesus says. Jesus referring, first of all, let's make sure we clear. Because we got we out here now telling everybody that they belong to the Lord. That's not true. Amen. Everybody don't belong to the Lord. But for those who do belong to the Lord, look what he says. In, 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 in verse 28, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. There we go with that hand again, that anthropomorphism, that hand again, out of God's hand, right? My father which give, was gave them, I'm sorry, my father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. So we're talking about how God is able to keep us no matter what. That even yourself, you can't take yourself out of God's hand. Yeah, amen. So many, many times we, we may have tried, but you, you and I can't even take ourselves out of God's hand. So we see that God is a keeper. Amen. But then in 2 Timothy 4.18, he tells us something. And the Lord shall deliver me, amen, as Paul speaking here, from every evil work. 
He's going to live. And watch this. Watch the word in the text. Watch the word in the text. And will preserve me and will keep me. Praise God. He's going, to, he's, going to, he's going to deliver me from all the evil works. But not only that, he's going to keep me until, uh, un, uh, until his heavenly kingdom. Amen. To whom be glory forever and ever. He's going to preserve me until, his, until he comes for me. He's going to keep me. And watch this. He's going to usher me into his heavenly kingdom. God is going to keep me on the earth. He's going to protect me, guard me, keep my soul, keep my spirit. And he's going to usher me into the heavenly kingdom. That's the promise that God has given us, that he's a keeper, amen? And so we're looking at the security tonight as we close out these last two verses, amen? We're going to talk about some, some horrific stuff coming up, but we got to understand your security, amen? Your security. Look what it says here also. Let me give you another one real quick. Look what he says here. He says this over in, um, in um, um, 2 Timothy 1.12, for, for, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed. That's me right there. I know who I believe. Amen. Is that you? Is that you tonight? And I am persuaded that he's able. Praise God. He's able. Uh, he's able to do what? That's a hoop word right there for the preacher. Amen. He's able. Amen. He's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. He's able to keep my salvation. Amen. He's able to keep my salvation. Amen. He's able until that day. He's able to preserve me and keep me until that day. He ushered me into the new Jerusalem and I see him face to face. Amen. And he consummates it. Amen. And so watch this. We see how God is a keeper. That's security. No matter what's going on, God's going to keep us the believer. Amen. God is going to keep us. Amen. And let me give you one more. Let me give you one more. I got to give you some biblical truth. I got to give you Bible for you to build up assurance of the security that God has given us. Amen. Watch this. John 17, 11 and 15. And he says, and now I'm no more in the world, but these are in the world. Look what, look what Jesus prays. This is Jesus praying to the Father. Amen. And always remember this about Jesus. Jesus always prayed according to God's will. He never prayed anything that was not according to God's will. Amen. And so he says this, and now I'm um, no more in the world, but these are in the world. Talking about the disciples. Jesus says, I'm leaving. I'm going to be with you, but, but my boys are still in the world. Amen. Uh, uh, watch this. Let's go a little bit further. The church is still in the world. Amen. Pastor Webster, uh, the, the believers are still in the world. Amen. And I'm coming to thee, Heavenly Father. Keep through thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Amen. But watch verse 15. And I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. Amen. But watch this. But that you should keep them from the evil one. But while they're in the world, while they're still being light and salt on the earth, keep them from the evil one. Preserve them from the evil world. From the evil one, the evil stuff, the evil one, the devil himself, the demons, and all the stuff that comes against them. So as we look at this, we see here that Jesus, he prays that the Father will keep us, and he does keep us. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, the question is, how are we kept? Now, we said we're beloved, and, and we said that God keeps us, but how does he keep us? How does the Lord keep us from all the stuff from us falling away, he's able to keep us. Well, he's able to keep us biblically. And, and, the, and the writer of Hebrew tells us in Hebrews uh, uh, 7.25, he says, Therefore, he's able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives. Watch this. You gotta, I want you to understand, Rudy. Watch this. You're in a Bible church. Watch this. God is able to keep us because Jesus is alive. That's how God is able to keep us because Jesus, his only begotten son, is seated at the right hand of the father and he ever lives to intercede in his high priestly role. In his high priestly role, he is now um, mediating. He's a, a meditorial role of his priesthood. Amen. An intercessory role. He's interceding on our behalf and because he's alive, he's able to uphold us and keep us. You better get that. Amen. Look what it says. 
And over here in, in Hebrews 9, 24, for Christ did not enter the sanctuary made with human hands that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, and now he appears right in God's presence. Because we have a risen Savior, he's able to keep us. Amen. He's able to intercede. He's our mediator. Amen. He's our high priest, and he's able to intercede. That's how you and I are kept. That's how you and I can never lose our salvation. That's why we, watch this, can never fall into a state, a true believer, into a state of apostasy. Why? Because the true believer has security in Christ and we're kept by him. I want you to understand that. Amen? And so watch this. Our spiritual life insurance policy, amen, is eternal. Amen? It's eternal. Now, with all this said, what, uh, and we understand this, what, uh, what are the reasons for the belief of security? Watch this. Let's, let's recap it real quick. We are called, before we get off this verse, because I know y'all ready to get off these two verses. You ready to bust into verse 3. We're going to hit it hard, too. We are called. Get that in your heart and understand what that means. We are, we are uh, uh, beloved. Understand that. We are kept. Somebody needs to hear that. Amen. Here we go. Here we go. And finally, the full final layer, amen, of our security. You are blessed. Mm, mm, mm. We're going to close out with this one. You're blessed. What does, what does the Lord keep multiplying to us? What does the Lord, what, what is he doing? How is he, what does he keep multiplying to us on a continuous basis? Now, let me tell you something right now. Spiritual blessings outweigh physical blessings. And every time we're looking at a physical blessing, that's, a, that's good. It's good that God has blessed you with a good job and six figures. God can do that. He does that. A nice home, a nice family. We thank the Lord for all that because all, all good and perfect gifts come from him. But I'm telling you right now, spiritual blessings always outweigh physical blessings because all physical blessings are temporal. Spiritual blessings are eternal. And so what, what is... What does the Lord keep multiplying to us? It says that we are blessed. When you tell somebody, I'm blessed, we text some folks and we put down, be blessed. What are we actually saying? What are we saying when we're walking around saying, I'm blessed of the Lord? Are we just saying that we're just blessed because we're getting physical blessings? Or we're saying what he says here in the text uh, about the blessings that we have. Remember how he gave us the multiplying of blessings he said first he says uh, let me share with you uh, it's a triad it's a triad of blessings that he gives uh, the believer amen and it's in this our security amen and get this as i'm speaking as i'm speaking to you right now there's a, co a constant and continuous right now as i'm speaking outpouring of blessings upon our lives even as i'm talking upon you right with you right now you may not know it, but God is pouring out a blessing upon you right now. I don't care where you at. I don't care where you at, the situation. If you're a child of God, it's a continuous blessing. And you say, Pastor, what is, what is the blessings that he's continuously, constantly pouring out on me, even right now as you're speaking? For the first thing he pours we get is this. He's given us mercy. That's a blessing. Amen. That's a continuous blessing that we're getting right now. As I'm speaking to you right now, watch this. We get mercy, class, mercy. And what is this mercy? Because we talk about mercy all the time. It means that God is showering upon us. Even as I speak, you in your living room right now, you may be listening in your car, whatever you're at right now, a few folks right now in the sanctuary, he is showering us with his compassion right now as I speak. His affection right now as I speak. His kindness right now as I speak. And watch this. We forget about this. And his feelings of pity towards us. Amen. Oh, you better get this. Amen. That's mercy. Amen. That's mercy. See, two things are essential for mercy. I want you to write this down somewhere. Find on your outline. Two things are essential in order to have mercy. Two things. Seeing a need and being able to meet the need. Seeing a need, that's what God does. He, he saw the need in you and I. He saw the need that we needed to be saved. We needed salvation. We were wretches undone. He saw the need, but then he was able to meet the need. Because when we were out, no strength, he sent his son. Amen? 
into the world to die our death. Amen. And so mercy is this seeing a need and then being able to meet the need. That's mercy. Amen. It's two elements that you need. Amen. Two elements that you need. Amen. And God sees our needs and he and he meets it and, and he feels for us. Amen. Look at Ephesians real quick. Look at Ephesians and watch this. Let me back this up as a proof text. And as for you, you were dead. You were dead. Uh, amen. You were dead. That's why nobody should be getting cute. No, nobody should be getting out of the way in church and getting cute. Think you better than somebody. No, we were all dead in what? Transgressions and sins. In which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the rule of the kingdom of the air and the spirit who is now at work and those who are disobedient. And all of us, if we was in church service right now, I would say to everybody, say all of us. All of us. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the desires of the flesh and following the desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Amen. Nobody was good enough. Nobody was that man or that woman that was on top of the hill. We all deserve the wrath of God. All of us. Amen. Amen. Watch this. But I like verse four. I'm glad it don't start there in Ephesians 2, 4. But because of his great love for us. Here's mercy. This is when mercy shows up. Mercy saw the need, had pity on the need. Right. But is able to address the need. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, that's mercy, getting something that we don't deserve. Amen. Not getting the judgment that we rightly deserve. Everybody rightly deserves a burning hell. I know you don't want to hear that on TV or nothing. Nobody's saying that everybody deserves to go to hell. Nobody deserves eternal life. Nobody deserves to walk on streets of gold. Nobody. But because of mercy. Amen. Made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgression. It is by grace you have been saved. Amen. So we see that constant mercy. That's the blessing. Amen. You may not have a lot of money. You may not have the biggest house or the best job, but you are blessed. Why? Because God is continuously showering you and I with mercy. But also we get peace. Watch this. The second thing. B. Put on your outline. B. Peace. Peace means that we are to be bound, that peace is, it means that we are to be bound, we are joined, we are weaved together. It gives us assurance, it gives, peace gives us confidence and security in God's care about us, God's knowledge about us. And we know that no matter what, this is what peace does, no matter what, watch this, God will provide for us. God will, watch this, he will, he will guide us. He will sustain us. Amen. He will deliver us. He will strengthen us. He will give us life. Amen. And not only now, but he will give us life even after this physical life. He'll give us eternal life. That's the peace. You should know right now that if to be absent from the body means to be present with the Lord, that's peace. To know that tomorrow I may not see another day, but to know that in my heart the peace is I'm going to walk on streets of gold with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In my heart, I know this for surety. That's the peace that God is constantly pouring down upon you and I. He's given us this peace that we can make it every day because I know that he's with us. Amen. And so it's the peace. Amen. A person can only experience this type of peace only if you know Christ and the pardon of your sins. Amen. Look what it says real quick. Let me give you a scripture here. Look what it says. We almost finished. And he says in, in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not to give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. God, he says, I'm going to give you my peace. Now, my peace, what it does, it does everything that I just said. It gives us all this confidence. It gives us security that no matter what, the Lord's with me. And no matter what, watch this, I'm going to see him. Amen? No matter what, it's the peace that God gives us. Amen? But also, watch this. He says in Romans 5.1, for those who have given their life to him, he says, therefore, since we have been justified. Through faith in Romans 5, 1, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, so we see that God gives us, not only does he gives us his mercy, but he showers us continuously with his peace. Last night, I woke up 2 o'clock in the morning. The peace of God rested on me. Amen. The peace of God rested on me. Prayed, Lord, you in control. I love you. 
Amen. Give your beloved rest. The peace of God rest. Went right back to sleep knowing that the Lord is with me. If he decide that that morning he's going to take me home, whatever, whatever the Lord's will is, because that's the peace of God. Hopefully you got that peace. I pray that you got that peace tonight. And if you don't, you're being robbed of it. You have it. You're being robbed of it. Amen. Watch this. And the last thing, see, you know what else we get continuously and being blessed? Amen. We we already talked about this. We get love. Amen. We kind of talked about this. Agape, unconditional love of God. Amen. Unconditional love of God is being constantly bestowed. I'm going to take a lot of time with this because we already talked about this. Amen. And the question is asked, but what? what the question is asked, but what if I stop loving God? What if I just stop loving him? What if I stop loving Jesus? Amen. What happens then? What happens if, if I stop loving the Lord? Well, guess what? You know what happens, saints? Watch this. Hold on to your seat. Guess what? God's love never stops. He never stops loving us. Matter of fact, if the truth be told, instead it would be him multiplying more love towards you. Amen? If we stop loving him or, or our love is starting to get cold, his love is more multiplied even more towards you and I. Amen? His love is multiplied to us. Amen? And whatever we're lacking, he's there to give us. Amen? So watch this. He's there to give us. Why? Because the scripture says this. It didn't say that you first loved him. It said he first loved you. You better get that. Amen. And because of that, his love is always multiplying unto us. Amen. And, and sometimes the truth be told, our love can, can get a little cold at times, but his love doesn't get cold. His love doesn't change. His love is unconditional. Amen. Amen. Watch this. Even if I sin or when I sin, watch this, his love never changed. He's not capricious like man, that man change on you. You got a friend one day, but they're not your friend the next day. God's not like this. His love never wavers. It never changed. No matter what I do. Amen. No matter what I say, his love still stays the same. Matter of fact, his love is even multiplied more towards me. Amen. Look what it says here in 1 John. 1 John 4, 9 and 10, it says, and, and this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God, this is how much he loved us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we may live through him. And this is love. Watch this as we come to the close. Not that we have loved God. Amen. Because we don't love him perfectly, but he loves us perfectly. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us. Praise God. He loved us so much. Here we go. Here we go, Bible church, that he sent his son to be the propitiation, the one who satisfies. Amen. He satisfies God's hot pleasure, wrath. He's the one who satisfies our sins. Amen. And so as we look at this, we see the security. I want you to catch this as we close. That's why you and I, watch this, the believer. If you're a believer tonight, Amen. I, and I'm finished these, these chapters. We're going to get into some other stuff. But if you're a believer tonight, you are secured in Christ. You have security in Christ. Amen. And God keeps taking us through these things. He keeps outpouring his blessing of mercy, peace, and love into our lives. I want you to get that tonight. Amen. As we start to look at some, some horrific stuff. Amen. We're about ready to tackle some falsehoods. We're going to look at some apostates because we got apostates even in the church. We got falsehood all around, and even our family. Amen. We, we hear somebody say a scripture, we think all of a sudden they, they know Bible or they love the Lord because they can quote, no, you got, don't just run like that. We got to be able to look at it because one thing about a, a, a false teacher, you got to look at character too. Amen. And so watch this. And so we're prepared now to look at some horrific stuff in verses 3 through 16 in Jude. Verses 3 through 16 is going to show us some horrific stuff amen and brothers and sisters watch this as we close church rooted bible we need to wake up we need to wake up amen we need to wake up amen uh, the, this this apostasy is upon us it's upon us amen stop thinking it's strange amen and guess what it's going to get worse and Satan and his demons are going to, they're going to flourish more in this world. And false teachers are going to, uh, going to be even more worse as the days approach. Amen. They're going to get worse. Churches are going to be um, loaded with apostates. Amen. They're going to sprinkle their way in. 
Amen. Try to deceive folks, lead people away. Even in, in the church, I ain't talking about in the world. They're going to come in. Remember Paul says they're going to come in from among us. Wolves, they're going to come in from among us. We're going to talk about that. Amen. To lead people away from the truth, to deny the truth, to walk away from the faith. I see it all the time. You got to be careful what's on YouTube. You got to be careful who you listen to. You got to be careful who you setting under. You got to be very careful. Amen. And it's so subtle. Amen. So subtle. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Men and women. Amen. That's what we talk about. And therefore, we need to do what, what Jude says. Watch this, church. We need to learn and we need to know how to contend for the faith. And that's what we're going to be discussing when we come back next week. Amen. We're going to listen. We're going to discuss this. Watch this. You are called. You are beloved. You are kept. And you are blessed. Amen. Don't worry. Don't worry. When the day comes, when the day comes and it's coming. Amen. It's coming. Amen. That we go to meet Jesus. It's coming. For some of us, it's coming faster. For some of us, closer to the day than it was yesterday. But the day that we go to meet Jesus, watch this. You can rest assured you will be there. <laughs> you will be there. Amen. Because according to his word, amen, the guarantee that he's given. You say, Pastor, what's the guarantee? Well, he's given it to us. He says, watch this. Look at, look at Jude um, um, 24, what he says. What did he say in Jude 24? Anybody? Can you see it on, on, on the screen? What did he say? What did he say? Read it for yourself. Huh? Read it for yourself. But he, one thing he says in this, you will not fall away. He will uphold you. He will keep you. Look at you for yourself. I could recite it. Look at it for yourself. Look at it on the screen and read it to yourself. What does he say? Look at the guarantee. What is the guarantee? That he's going to keep you and you're not going to fall away. Mm, he's got you. So I want you to be encouraged. I want you to trust the Lord for great things and believe that the Lord is on your side. Amen. And we're going to get to heaven. And guess what? When we get there, he's going to be so happy to, to, to have us be right there with us. Uh, with him amen christ is going to be happy to see us amen let's identify next week we're going to start looking at wolves be with us next week make sure you're in bible study we're going to start looking at wolves and sheep's clothing be ready maybe one here tonight watch this you say i want to be the called the beloved i want to be uh, the one that's kept i want to be the one that is blessed amen to get god's mercy amen his peace and his love but you can but you got to come to the cross. Amen. No other way, no other way to salvation except by way of Jesus Christ. You, you can't be good enough. Amen. If you, if, you, if, you, if you fall short of the law in any area, if you, if you sin any iota of sin, watch this, it's deserving of a burden in hell. And nobody, nobody is that perfect. Amen. But there is a perfect man who came into an imperfect world to die your death on a rugged cross. And all you got to do is accept him in your heart. As Savior, call upon the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. Amen. He came into the world to redeem that which was lost. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world may be saved. If that's you tonight, call that number on the screen. Say, I've accepted Christ as my Savior and Lord in my heart. And I asked him to forgive me my sins and be Lord of my life. And if that's you tonight, welcome to the called, to the beloved, amen. Welcome to those who are kept and those who are blessed, to the family of God. May God bless you. See you on Sunday. Got a great word on Sunday. Looking for you all to come on out. Get back into church. Get back into the fellowship, amen. Nothing like being in the fellowship. Get back to the things of God. May God bless you, and may heaven richly smile upon you. Be blessed.